Let's try problems 10, 13, and 14. In problem 10, you're given information on a variable known as x bar, or the sample mean. It's normally distributed your total with a mean of 9 and a standard deviation of 0 0.075. We're going to discuss the sampling distribution of the sample mean in Unit 5. Right now I just want you to use the information given to solve the problem about what to expect from the sample mean. What's the probability the sample mean from a sample of 1100 adults is between 8 and 10? This means, given that it's normally distributed, we can standardize. So we standardize using the distribution, turning x bar into a z, or standard normal, and here we go. This reduces the limits to negative 13 and 13. Since we know to four decimal places that our table runs only between negative 3.49 and 3.49, clearly the, the entire distribution of the standard normal is covered from negative 13 to 13. So the answer here is that the probability is close to 1. And we say close to 1 because if you're considering more than four decimal places, um, it could be um, not one, or just close to one. Okay, for problem 13, we're going to apply the rules for means and variances. The rules were derived to help to calculate the mean and variances of a sum of random variables, or a difference of random variables without first having to find the distribution of the sum or difference. If we take the variable that we're interested here, uh, in here, it's going to be regarding the total number of heads in four coin tosses. Let's reduce that to looking first at one coin toss. Let's calculate the mean and variance of that. The mean and variance would be derived from the distribution. What does the distribution look like? So let's define the random variable x as the number of heads in one coin toss. The possible number of heads is zero heads, or one head. The probability of zero heads, in other words, a tail, is 50%. And the probability of a head is 50% for a total of one. All right, so I don't know if you've ever seen it like that, but that's that is it. That is that is the probability distribution for one coin toss. I'm looking for the variable number of heads. What's the mean of this? Well, let's use our mean and variance rule to get the mean and then the variance. The mean would be the weighted mean, which is the probability or the weight, times the score, right? And we add that to the weight times the score, and the mean is 50%. So the expected value is 50%. What is the variance? Variance we write like this, with a square in the notes. Sometimes I forgot to put the square, but if it says variance, it should be a square there, so you can correct that. All right, so to calculate the variance, it is the weight times the squared deviation from the mean. The outcome is 0. The mean is 0.5 squared plus the weight times the devia squared deviation from the mean, which is going to be 1 minus 0 0.5. I'm going to ignore that 4. And... And the answer is 0 0.25 when you put that all together. Okay, now let's define a new variable because we want to get to the original.
problem. Back to the original problem, we are going to toss four coins. Four coins tosses is going to be um, uh, the outcome or the number of heads on four coin tosses is going to be the result of tossing one coin and another coin and another coin and another coin which may have different outcomes but have all the same properties that each um, each coin toss shares okay all right so they all have the same mean and variance so to calculate the mean of y using the rules that we know the expected value of x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 is going to be the expected value of x1 plus the expected value to the sum. The mean of the sums is equal to the sum of the means. I hope this fits. Okay, it doesn't fit, but you know this should be x4. And what is the answer to that? Well, it's going to be 4. Um, well, each one is going to be 0 0.5, and they're all the same. And so the answer is 4 times 0 0.5, or 2. Okay, so, so far, our mean is 2. So the possible answers are A and E. What about the variance? variance of y is equal to the variance of x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 which is because um, each of these variables are independent from each other because y again because the the outcome on the first toss does not influence the probability of outcomes on the second and so on. So this would just be the sum of the variances with no covariance term necessary. Okay, and each of these has the same variance from here, one quarter, so we have our answer as 4 times a quarter or 1. So the answer is A. Here is our final problem. Like the last one, we're going to apply the rule of the means. How do we do that? Well, we're told about a variable. Um, that is the outcome of rolling a dice, okay? And then what we're really interested in is um, this new variable we create from that outcome that is um, two times the dice result plus one, okay? So that's going to be the variable we're interested in. So let's write that where x is the outcome on a four-sided dice in English we say die okay so x is the outcome on a four-sided die and what we are really interested in is the outcome times 2 plus 1. This is like our new variable called y. All right, so we need to figure out first the mean of x, and then we can use our, our rule for means to calculate the mean of the new variable y. So what would be the mean for x? As in the last problem, I can present you the probability distribution possible outcomes 1, 2, 3, 4, all equally likely in this case for a total 1. Okay, so that's the probability distribution of x. And so the mean 
again, it could be the weighted mean, but the weights are all the same, so this is just the regular average. The average would have to be, since the weights are all the same, we can write it like this. But, um, the average would be 2.5. Okay, so then what would be the, the mean of y? It would be the expected value of y using the rules uh, for linear transformation. Then that would just be the expected value of 2x plus 1, which is, hmm, I'm out of space. Let's go here. Which would be the expected value of 2x plus the expected value of 1. Well, this is just a constant, so this just becomes 1. And this becomes 2 vx. Okay, so using our rules, then this is just 2 times 2.5 plus 1, which becomes 5 plus 1, which is 6. And the answer is C.